isn't it? Okay, now I'm <laughs> recording the video. So we'll record the second half of the interview. I'm so sorry, Ariel. I don't know. That's all good. What's wrong with Nothing me is wrong with you. You're I, human. You know, and I did meditate today too. So <laughs> God. Okay. Let's so, ask what's right with you today. Everything. Okay. Yes, what's wrong with yes. you? Nothing. Because we're humans and humans make silly mistakes sometimes. It's all good. <laughs> it would be weird if we were perfect all the time. That would be awkward. <laughs> it would be. You're right. Um, yep. Okay. I'm going to start recording the audio again, picking it up from the, uh, from asking about children. Okay. So before we go there, I just want to say, I love you and all your humanity. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I will never <laughs> proclaim to be perfect. I mean, I've been, <laughs> it, it's kind of funny. I've been doing this for a year and a half now and it's fun because there's so many people who are women in their forties who really are just learning about all these things, right? There is. Yeah. And so I want to bring it out to those people who are not biohackers, who are not scientists, who are not like just so that they can understand it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I do apologize. And I'm going to hit record again. In three, two, one. Yeah, so Ariel, talk to me about kids. And we were talking about their brain waves and the state that they're typically in. So interestingly, kids actually have very high levels of alpha. That's just the way their brains are wired as they grow. So any kid who does the muse is going to get a ton of birds when they're young. That's how their brains are. And, you know, you may associate that with a greater state of openness, curiosity, the ability to be in the moment, less rumination. Um, so it may be that having their brain in the self alpha state lends itself to the kinds of qualities of childhood that we look at. Um, but it's just how the developing brain generates brain waves. Um, and so that's, that's the way it is. Now, would you recommend like you, you, obviously you guys have done so many studies on this. Is this a good thing for kids who do have ADHD kids who do have severe anxiety? I would guess this would be a great tool for them. So, you know, as a thing, I'm not a medical doctor and this right. does not have right. FDA approval for kids with ADHD or anxiety. But right. anecdotally, um, meditation has been demonstrated to be effective uh, in both of those cases. Um, we say don't use the muse with kids under 16 because we are uh, basically GDPR compliant, which is Europe's privacy laws. Um, that said, it is safe to use on younger children. And we have had a number of studies using Muse with students, um, grade eight students, for example, by the University of I believe, Kansas. Uh, yeah, Kansas State University, they used Muse with grade seven students and demonstrated a 72% decrease in sending kids to the principal's office. Oh, after using that, Muse. That's a good thing. You know, I'm going to have to try this. I, I have a university student and a high school student, and I have tested a couple of things on them. But as you know, you probably would have some idea. Teenagers are not always easy to get them to do what you want them to do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have tried a couple of my biohacking gadgets on them, but I'm definitely going to try this with them when they when they're in that right state and they're open to trying it. I won't mm -hmm. force it on them, but because I can totally see the change even in myself as a person. And I can say, quite frankly, I have become a better person after using this. Wow. Um, and I, I say that because I am 100% one of these people who I have a very fiery personality, I'm Eastern European, you know, and I found that since I've gotten into this whole world, and I think it's a, an accumulation of many things that I do, but definitely practicing meditation regularly has made me a better person, guaranteed. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's, I, I'm not going to say it if I don't mean it, that's for sure. But I do mean that because I, you know, I have had a lot of health issues and I feel like, and this is going back 10 years, and I feel like people often lose their patience when they're not well. 
And so this is another reason you mentioned the breast cancer. And I feel like that's an important connection to make because when people are unwell and unless you've been there, you don't know what it's like. And often your patience is limited when you're not well yourself. So this helps in your whole journey to wellness, in my opinion. So I'm going to cry because it's so beautiful to have built something and to hear somebody say that it changed their life. Yeah. And it had made them a better person. I mean, that's an extraordinary gift for me to hear. Um, and I'm so honored that we were able to give that gift to you. I'm, I'm actually going to cry. Oh, and- oh. <laughs> well, don't cry, Ariel. It's okay. It's okay. And the other reason is because it changed my life too. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I know for me, I was very defensive. Um, I would get into fights with my husband all the time because he would say and something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and I'd re- reply back defensively. Um, and he'd be like, why are you like, what's going on? And through the process of meditation, I've been able to really observe myself, observe my reactions, stop myself in the middle of the reaction, recognize like, wow, this thing that I'm doing is not helping or serving me or either one of us. And then actually be able to intervene and change the way that I act and react in a way that I didn't have access to before. It would just be like this automatic loop. And so, you know, that's a huge way that's changed me when you talk about patients. I too went through health concerns and like, it's so easy to get so invested and frustrated and, you know, upset about what's going on with you, which never, ever, ever helps. And so this practice of equanimity that I was talking about before, being able to accept what is and not fight against it and move with it rather than be upset about it was just so huge. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. Um, Because I live it, right? I live it. And a lot of people who um, are going through health issues or going through difficulties, sometimes they need to look outside and look at something that they've never tried before. So I would have never even thought of meditation five years ago. Probably, I just would have never even thought of it. I'm like, meh, I can't do that. My brain is too active, right? So uh, I have a couple of other questions. I do know you have another meeting to get to, but here's a question for you actually two, and they're relating to sleep. So on days that, because as you see, I have my sleep gadgets that tell me I have an aura ring. I have everything that tells me if I sleep well. And then it's how I feel. I still feel like how we feel inside is what's most important. And on nights when I have a not a great sleep, I can't get into that proper state. I have used that meditation, my Muse meditation headband, and I can't do it. No matter what, I'm hearing lots of wind and I'm hearing lots of rain. And so why is that? So sleep is an important component. Yeah. And very interestingly, we actually have a new device, Muse S, that also helps you sleep. So sleep is incredibly important and it allows this feed forward cycle. So when you sleep well, you are able to be more cognitively aware and more emotionally self-regulated. Those of us with kids know that when your kid doesn't sleep well, he is not emotionally (laughs) self-regulated. Kid misses their nap, they are cranky. Humans the same way, emotional self-regulation, adults. Emotional self-regulation is really difficult when we don't sleep well. So you're not as attentive, you're not cognitively performing as well, and you're not as able to emotionally self-regulate, so meditation is harder. And that's part of why we built Muse S, our new device that helps you sleep, because it gives you these beautiful meditation experiences and biofeedback that lull you into sleep, so you're able to get a better night's sleep, and then you can wake up in the morning more refreshed, more controlled, (laughs) more emotionally self-regulated, have a better day, meditate better, which then reduces your anxiety and your buzzing mind, which then helps you sleep better in this amazing feed forward. Okay. This is interesting because I don't, I've never used this device. Now, here's another question because I've heard mixed things on this. Should you meditate before sleep or is there a certain type of meditation that is best before sleep because I have only I've never tried anything except for I've done yoga nidra before Mm -hmm. bed Um, otherwise I haven't tried my muse before bed so maybe tell me a little about that sure 
So I'm actually currently running a study at a large corporation with 300 people who are using Muse for sleep. And part of what we're doing is doing the Muse focused attention meditation before bed. And so what you do there is prior to bed, you do the focused attention practice. And what it does is it helps to calm your mind because one of the main reasons that people have difficulty sleeping is because your mind is just going. You can't shut it off. Right. So in the practice that we talked about earlier, you notice that your mind's on a thought. You say, hey, I don't need that. Come on back to the breath. And you're teaching your mind to be quiet before sleep. So you do that in the evening, like, and then you use the Muse device that you can actually sleep in, the Muse S, that gives you a different type of meditation to actually help you fall asleep. So it gives you these beautiful guided uh, journeys that just move your brain and body into sleep. So there's multiple different forms of meditation that you can use to sleep. And the Muse Mind right before bed is so powerful. Even if you're not using the go-to-sleep journeys, we've discovered in the study that just using Muse Mind before bed helps people sleep better. Okay. So what is the Muse S? Is this an actual device or yeah, is it so an app? It's a new device. It's a um, really cozy headband that has EEG sensors as well as PPG that tracks your heart, accelerometer, gyroscope, and it connects to the same Muse app that you've been using. So okay. now we have, you've got the original Muse. We now have Muse 2, which gives you uh, beautiful meditation experiences, and Muse S, which gives you all the meditation experiences of Muse 2, plus uh, this beautiful go to sleep experience. And then it tracks your sleep through the night, basically as like effectively as a sleep lab. It is. Okay. That See, that to me is fascinating because I have heard a lot of mixed reviews on devices for tracking sleep. And one of the things that I have heard that REM sleep is impossible to track accurately with a wearable unless you're in a sleep lab with the things on your head. So is that as, so this is clinical, yeah. really? Yep. So now we have basically like a sleep lab with the things on your head in your bed, but it is Ooh. small and cozy and comfortable. It's just like a little sweatband on your forehead. Okay. Yeah. I did see it on your website. That is amazing. So then you would definitely be able to back up the stats on that. So the reason I say that is because, so in my family, we have a whoop band. Mm -hmm. We had a Fitbit that has gone. Um, we have a bio strap and we have an aura ring and they all say different things. <laughs> yep. Because nothing can track deep sleep. It's actually deep sleep. That's the hardest to track. Nothing oh, can track REM. So REM you have, they're both difficult to track to be okay. honest, but it's the deep sleep that is the most dishonest on the other devices because oh. they're all using either movement or heart rate and it's only EEG that can show you. So when you go into deep sleep, you immediately have this drop in delta waves, um, but you don't necessarily have a change in your, in your body movement. So you have a drop in delta waves and what we're able to show you with Muse is not just whether you're accurately in deep sleep or not. We're even able to show you the depth of your deep sleep. So we have these things called deep sleep points that show you how deep your deep sleep has gotten so that you know when you, you know, shift your routine, you make it darker, you stop drinking coffee, et cetera. You can actually see if your deep sleep is getting deeper. Right. So it's very actionable. Like you can change different lifestyle um, habits or even supplements. Like I take a supplement called spermidine. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it is highly effective to improve deep sleep. I wish I had this before I started taking <laughs> spermidine though, but um, that's amazing. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that. Now, what's the future of Muse? So we have spent you know, the last many years on meditation and helping people build their meditation practices. Now we're very invested in helping people sleep better. So our new device is designed to help you fall asleep faster and stay asleep. And in the study that I'm in the middle of, we can really start to see the evidence. It's really working. It's incredible, oh. um, and which is incredible because people have such difficulty sleeping. Yeah. And so in the future, it's really about helping people with what they need at that moment in their life. So we have this massive collection of guided meditations. So we have meditations for anything you need. You have a relationship problem. We've got a meditation for that. You have a workplace issue. We have a meditation for that. We even have a two minute meditation for when you're frustrated standing in line. 
So, oh my God, how much are people going to need that? How, do you have one for having being a parent of teenagers? Yes, we do. We have a whole parenting collection. Oh my God, I love and it. And then we have a college collection for those teenagers. Oh my gosh, Ariel, that's amazing. Okay, so that's okay. I love it. I love where your company's going. I love what you guys are doing. I have one last question because I forgot to ask it before. This Muse S, not only does it measure all of the, the brain waves accurately mm -hmm. and clinically, but it also helps you sleep as well, right? Yes, so correct. It does it does both. Yep. Okay. I wanted to clarify that because it, it's kind of like, so you would use your headband, you know, let's say earlier in the evening, get in that good state. And then you would use the Muse S before bed to help you fall asleep and stay asleep and measure sleep. Yes. And you can use the same headband for all of it. So the Muse S does the meditation and the sleep. So then, well, I see, I'm, I love my device, but so <laughs> if I wanted to, I could upgrade and get the Muse S and it'll do everything for me. Exactly. Amazing. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Ariel, before we close off? I've loved this conversation so much. Oh, it's been wonderful. Um, only that the teenagers in your house might steal it, <laughs> which is okay. We see this happen. It goes into a house and you're like, mom buys one. And then dad, who's never meditated before, is like, ooh, there's a cool gadget. I'll try that. And I then the know. kids steal it. And then they start competing about how many birds they're going to get. <laughs> Actually, that's like me and my girlfriend with the birds. We, we yeah. compete. We talk about it sometimes. That's awesome. The real thing that I wanted to add is what a joy and a pleasure it is to be here with you and what a joy and a pleasure it is to be speaking to anyone whose ear I'm in because I know you are all beautiful, capable, amazing human beings. And you may not feel that at every moment. And anytime you don't feel that, you can just tell yourself that that's just an artifact of your brain and it's not real or true. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much, Ariel. Thank you for coming. I appreciate your time today. Oh, my joy and pleasure. So nice to be here. Okay, I stopped recording the audio. I think that was lovely. I can't believe that I missed all that video, though. <laughs> it's all me. good. It all good. But whatever. At least we have some. I'll be able to provide some of these.